Hey folks, this is Rich from Pacific, and I'm back at you with another episode of my Sampire 101 video tutorial series, in which I'm going to be showing you how to create from scratch a new Sampire character in Ultima Online, uh, the quickest and most efficient way to get going, and all the things you'll need to start in order to be able to use this awesome character template. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on the magic abilities of the Sampire, mainly Necromancy, Chivalry, and Bushido. Uh, I'm going to focus on showing you how to train these skills to where they need to be to get going uh, as quickly as possible. I'm not going to really focus too much on how you're going to use some of these abilities, but uh, my goal here is really just to help you get started and to show you some of the tricks that I've learned to get these done quickly. When I'm building a new Sampire character, I like to start with the magic abilities first and get them out of the way. This is mainly because uh, you really want to get Necromancy up to GM level uh, before you start combat training because it just makes your life a lot easier and it makes it so that the rest of your play can be spent just playing the character, learning how it's used, and you don't really have to focus too much on things you have to come back and do later. Um, Chivalry we're also going to take to 80. Uh, so that our quality of life is better. We'll be able to sacred journey around without failing. We'll be able to use things like consecrate weapon, enemy of one, and even resurrection if necessary. Uh, Bushido, we're only going to take up to a certain point uh, in this initial training because you only really need to get it to about 60 to start being effective in combat. So we'll start off with necromancy. Okay. So now it's on to Necromancy on our new Sampire build. So Necromancy for the Sampire is the Vampire portion. Uh, you will be using a spell called Vampiric Embrace when we're all done, and that will allow you to go into Vampiric mode, which gives you 20% of all damage you do through combat back as health. So Necromancy will be our main and mostly only used healing ability. Um, the problem with kind of bolting on vamp uh, necromancy into an existing build is that um, it does take quite a bit of mana uh, to train. That's one of the reasons why we started with necromancy 50 and uh, so that we kind of shave some of the time off of there. Uh, so in order to effectively do this, that's why I like to do necromancy first, is because um, it's helpful to have meditation and focus both while you're training any sort of magic ability so your mana regens quicker. I'm also using a suit, so you'll need some sort of mage training suit that has uh, you know, 100% lower regen cost and 40 lower mana cost. You'll also want items that give you six faster cast recovery, and two faster casting. Uh, that's the big thing. Also plus as much mana, extra mana as you can squeeze on it. So I've got, I pieced together a suit, you know, there's a few legendary items in here and there's some lesser items and they all have, you know, mana regen, mana increase, lower mana cost, or, or lower region cost. You don't really need a full 70 resist suit, although this one does because there's a few, um, legendary items. So I'll, I'll quickly go through the items that I'm using here. You can see this is a lesser artifact. Um, one thing you want to make sure is that the items you use um, are obviously within your strength requirement, which won't be a problem since we raised our strength first using the resist technique. And if they are um, something like studded or a heavier piece that they have to at least have the mage armor because you don't want to be... Um, you don't want your mana to generate slower than possible. <clears throat> so I'm using, you know, three-in-one rings and bracelet. Um, the rest of the properties don't really matter. Uh, just as long as you have 100% uh, lower region cost, uh, six and two and 40 LMC, you should be good. Um, I get about 16 mana regen out of this, so it should make it go a little quicker for me. <clears throat> Another reason why I do... Um, uh, necromancy first is because it's going to be my main healing spell and when I get into combat it's just you know it's easier to just go 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 if I don't have to worry about also 
using potions or having healing for any period of time or confidence healing and it's kind of slow so you want to get necro to 100 first and lock it um, and there are a couple ways to do that so the first way is you can do like you you know some people do with any uh, magic ability they could uh, essentially macro or cast the same spell over and over that gives them the best gains so if you look up in UO guide with necromancy since we're starting at 50 we could start off casting horrific beast um, and then we could move on to wither between 70 and 90 and then after 90 we could go to lich form to 100 and lock it at 100 <clears throat> now that's one way now I'm not going to advocate using any sort of auto macro or script that sort of thing um you know some people do it just remember that it's against the terms of service on a production shard to do anything unattended uh, i can tell you that you know simply casting the same spell over and over or these following this list if you do it non-stop it takes probably about a day uh or you know 14 hours of play quote unquote before you'll get to GM um, necromancy. So the other way that you can use, uh, you can train necromancy is to, beforehand you're gonna wanna make a set of three and one plus 15 necromancy uh, ring and bracelet. <clears throat> and to do this, um, you know, you can use your imbuer, but what you're going to want to do instead of just going through horrific beast then wither then um, lich form is you will start off since we started with 50 necromancy adding an additional 30 points in these two items puts us right to 80 or 81 I've been working and then you can start right off with wither um, this is helpful because um, it gives you something to do as opposed to just standing in one place casting a spell you can use this to uh, go into wraith form and you can go to a spawn and cast wither so let me assign a key to wither I'm going to use W here so I could go into wraith form and find myself a spawn like sleepy dragon or you can actually I'll show you another good spot to go but we'll we'll go into sleepy dragon here we find it another thing people don't know is that in wraith form you can actually cast recall without majory which is very helpful so I could go to a spawn like this well it's kind of advanced right now and I could lead them around and just wither and wither now you're gonna fail at first for a while because I'm only 80 and then what happens is that once you get to about 95 with wither um, then you take off one of the rings and substitute it for your other faster casting ring and you just repeat the process the reason why you use weight wraith form is that it will in theory uh, leech mana back while you're um, hitting objects so that might not be the greatest plus, uh, place to do this um, but you get the idea um, another thing that's helpful to do that while you're training in wraith form is to let spirit speak raise it kind of helps uh, take away some of these other um, padding skills that we used when we were buying up our max uh, skills um, but it also does a little more damage and will help you leech back more mana okay so to make the necromancy skill training uh, jewelry you will need um, an imbuer of some sort so I've got my imbuer with 120 and you can take any plain ring and bracelet and imbue what you need so you'll need you know three faster casting recovery and one faster casting on each one and necromancy of 15 and so this takes a few uh, imbuing regs um, mainly you'll need um, essence of achievement uh, which you can get from the Stygian Abyss um, one of the demon spawns they drop there and you'll also need the essence of diligence which uh, drops on the Stygian dragon spawn on some of the 
fairies and wyverns that spawn outside that. So you'll need about 20 of each of those. You'll also need some relic frags, uh, probably about 20 of those, some enchanted essence and various gems. So you can see um, to do faster casting, it requires five relic frags, 10 rubies and 10 essence of achievement. Uh, to do faster casting recovery at three, it takes five relic frags, amethysts, and ten essence of diligence. And to do the necromancy uh, at 15 at the maximum, it requires um, five enchanted essence, ten star sapphires, and ten crystalline black, black rocks. Now the black rocks may be the toughest to get out of this list, you can find them um, on shadow elementals. Uh, since the gold elementals are not spawning anymore in Blackthorn's dungeon, um, uh, either mining for them, buying them from a vendor, or uh, farming the shadow elementals in the Yamasoto, Yamasoto mines uh, may be your best bet. So regardless, you'll need uh, 20 of them total to make the set of rings for these. So another good spot, if you don't want to go into a spawn or find another place, another good place to do the Wraith uh, Wither technique using the skill rings, as I discussed, is to start off, you know, having both of your skill rings on. So you have a total of, you have over 80 necromancy. You set the spirit speak to raise up, and then you go to uh, the acid slugs and slimes in the underworld. So, uh, if you're not familiar, you can kind of mark this rune ahead of time, or if you use a corrupted portal, you just select, uh, dungeon, um, underworld, and it will take you to this volcano dungeon entrance. Uh, it is on Fire Island, on the same island that, um, the Shrine of Humility is on, and the Demon Temple. And it's up at the north here. And it's only on the tram fat, um, the trammel facet. So what you can do is you go into this area. And this, this is kind of a nice little area because um, they constantly respawn. And you can basically sit in one spot and just wither. Um, now, you will still have to meditate and uh, those sorts of things um, often. A lot of times people use this for, like, this person's using this for bar training. Uh, I'm going to not really ruin his day, but I'm just going to sit here and essentially do the same thing. I'm going to wither, and you'll see that I will still use mana, but some of it's being regen, so it allows you to do um, a lot more training, and you can kind of just spam wither until you get to... 95 in necromancy in which case then you would take off one ring and replace it with a regular faster casting ring and continue until uh, you're done and then when you're all done with that process uh, you'll have about 95 or so necromancy and you can finish it off using um, uh, lich form so this might uh, you know be a little less tedious than staying in one spot um, you can also try these acid slugs over here. If you stand on one of these things, they won't actually hit you. And that's the fastest way I know to gain necromancy. Of course, unless you have it on a soul stone already, or you can buy uh, scrolls of transcendence, uh, that's great too. Uh, however you do it, you need to get to 100 necromancy, and then you can move on. All right, so here we are. After about, it's probably about six hours of constant wither training. Um, I am now at GM Necromancy, and you can also see that I'm almost GM Spirit Speak, so I'm going to go ahead and lock my Necromancy, and that's as far as I need to take that. Um, I just wanted to point out that, again, this took me about six hours of um, constant casting of the Wither spell. Um, 
I will say that I found that standing in this location right here on this little ledge allowed me to basically constantly hit all of the s slimes that would spawn in this little area and when they killed when you kill them they'll spawn up in there and you can basically set this up to just non-stop cast wither over and over uh, remember the technique is to initially start out when you start with 50 um, necromancy you want to start with your skill rings on and have them both so that you'll have a total of 80 plus and then cast wither until your necromancy reaches to about 90 95 and then you take one of the jewels off and replace it with a normal faster casting ring and that'll drop your necromancy back down to about 80 or so and then keep casting wither over and over and over and then when you reach 95 or so again you take off your second skill ring and you put on your just regular faster casting so you should have no skill added and then you could keep casting wither now for this i actually cast wither all the way to gm um, i did not use any other spells so i was in wraith form which um, again rem makes it so that the higher your spirit speak goes the more you'll leech back so that's why you set it to raise you can see now that like when i cast this i'm not using any mana at all um, or if i do it's quickly regen um, and the reason why we use wither is because it's way faster um, you can cast it very very fast with a uh, six and two for faster casting and faster cast recovery um, and you don't have to meditate using this method so it saves us a lot of time really by doing this you can sh you can cut the time it takes to go to uh, GM necromancy at least by half if not by a whole third um, so there you go um, now that we're done with our necromancy I'm going to go back and we're going to start with our chivalry training okay so let's get into training our chivalry so just as a quick overview um, we talked about this a little bit before but chivalry is the magic ability that is assigned for paladin type characters um, it's basically like casting spells except you're not using any sort of magical reagent what you use instead are the tithing points and if you recall we tithed a bunch of gold to an onk so any onk you can find it either at one of the shrines or some of the moon gates they'll have an onk or there in new haven there's one where you can tithe gold and you cast these spells essentially by spending tithing points or spending gold to cast them they do require mana and we are going to be using several of these spells throughout the, uh, the course of playing a sampire um, but we'll go over setting that up when we get done with our training but to train um, what you can do is follow the guide that is on UO guide and this I found this works pretty well um, you know you start off by buying it up to 40 like we did and you start by simply you know holding a weapon in your hand so I'm gonna add uh, you know just use the dagger it doesn't even have to be the um, the the weapon that you want to use just any weapon and you cast consecrate weapon over and over until you get to about 45 so consecrate weapon uh, says it temporarily enchants a weapon so that the type of damage it is dealing is the target's weakest type so this is a very very useful skill you'll be using it quite a bit I put it as one of my primary keys here um, I usually like to set to W so it's right along my keyboard I'm gonna go ahead and remove my um, necromancy training stuff I don't need meditation anymore so now that I have consecrate set to a simple key like W I will just spam it and cast it over and over. Now you can see I'm also using if you if you haven't uh, if you're not familiar with this, you could get what's called a crystal ball of knowledge. I'm not going to go into getting this. It's it's a pretty easy quest. You just need to find a few types of reagents and give it to a gargoyle NPC that's in Terramur. 
um, and it'll give you this nice, super handy item called the Crystal Ball of Knowledge. Now it's telling me when you turn it on, any skill check you do, it'll tell you like how optimal you are for gaining that skill. So it's saying right now that casting Consecrate is optimal. And you can see with six and two, faster casting and faster cast recovery, I can basically just chain it over and over. It's not really using much mana. It is using gold every time I um, succeed, but that's why you need to start off with about 50,000 or maybe a little bit less tithing points. So once I move on, once I reach 45, then I'll move on to the next uh, spell, Divine Fury. Um, now, Divine Fury is not one that I use a lot, um, mostly because I can... I'll show you through this build where you're going to be able to get most of the hit chance increase and um, defenses that you need. But it is something that you might want to occasionally put on your uh, into your rotation. Um, regardless, for this particular case, we're going to start casting Divine Fury at 45, and we're going to take it to 60. Um, then... From there, we're going to move on to Enemy of One. And Enemy of One is also another chivalry spell that we will use quite a bit. Um, there are a few gotchas with this. Um, with Enemy of One, all damage dealt to the exact type of creature that you, ca uh, that you attack first, uh, you'll do extra damage. And that extra damage is dependent on your level of chivalry. Um, the downside to this is all enemy, other enemies will do double damage against you. So, um, part of playing the Sampire is knowing when to cast Enemy of One and when not to. Um, casting Enemy of One in a scenario where there's a lot of different types of monsters that could hit you pretty hard uh, can be your downfall. Uh, regardless, we're going to use Enemy of One to train us all the way up to level 70 or skill level 70. And then after that, we'll switch to the spell Holy Light, which is an uh, area of effect spell. Uh, it's got a pretty small radius, so it's I never really use this spell at all, except for during training. But Holy Light will take us up to 80, which is where we're going to lock our chivalry. Um, do keep in mind that if you plan on taking Chivalry all the way up to 120 using an alternate build, you're going to have to switch to Noble Sacrifice, um, which Noble Sacrifice is something that we'll use quite a bit. Um, it is basically your resurrection spell. The problem with it is that when you do cast it, you your hit points, mana, and stamina are all reduced down to almost nothing. So you don't want to cast it while you're surrounded by monsters because one hit will pretty much take you down. Um, so if you're training this up past 80, you will need to switch to Noble Sacrifice. And this guide is saying that you know after 115, even Noble Sacrifice is 100% guaranteed. So your gains are going to be very, very slow. Um, I'm not going to go into how to exceed Chivalry past 80, but it's giving you some good guidance here. It says you can use Discordant somebody. Um, there's a uh, Discord trick that you can use using the Satire um, or the Satyr, or you can just use the Guaranteed Gain system, which is 0.1 a day. Um, you know, So good luck if that's what you plan on doing. We're not going to do that. We're going to just train our Chivalry to 80. So here we go. Okay, so that took about about two and a half hours or so of following the UO guides uh, uh, guidance on which chivalry spells to use. And after that time, I am now 80 chivalry. So as you can see, what I'm going to want to do is lock that skill. I'm not. I don't want it to go any further. Uh, and at this time, it's kind of good to go through and make sure that we may be running out of points. So I want to make sure that uh, some of those other skills that we bought up, um, uh, like some of the various trade skills, like lumberjacking, that there's still a little bit of skill points available for our working. Um, you do want to make sure that um, 
you always have enough skill points available <clears throat> or set to down so that you can gain in what you're trying to do because there's nothing more frustrating to than sitting there waiting for something to gain and you just don't have any points available. Eventually I'm going to want to start lowering meditation and spirit speak and focus because I'm not going to need those. But I'm going to keep them where they're at right now uh, just until I need to lower them. Uh, so for right now it looks like I have 8 points in wrestling and 23 points in lumberjack. So I'm actually, I am going to lower, set meditation to lower right now because <clears throat> I, I don't mind if it starts going down. I won't be needing it anymore. So now that I am 80 chivalry, uh, I can go ahead and set up some of the uh, macros that I'm going to be using in my Sampire build. So I'm going to go through each one, figure out, show you kind of how I set it up and uh, how I use it. So the first one will be Cleanse by Fire. This is essentially your cure. So if you're poisoned, you can attempt to use Cleanse by Fire. Uh, I'm going to put it down here at the bottom to kind of match where I would have it on the keyboard. And I'm going to set it to uh, C. And notice that it is by default set to target self, which is what I want. So if I ever get poisoned, I hit C and I'll attempt to cast uh, Cleanse by Fire. Uh, the next one is a healing ability, which it does work in a pinch. Uh, generally, I won't use this as primary healing, but it, it can uh, help sometimes, especially if you're trying to heal somebody else or trying to heal your Swamp Dragon, or sometimes if you just need an extra heal uh, to get going. Close wounds. So I'm going to kind of set it over here to the side, and I'm going to leave it to be target cursor. And I'm going to set it to H. So now if I hit H, I can uh, get close. Now, the thing is, you have to be pretty close with uh, closed wounds. Yeah, I think you have to be within two tiles. So, um, you know, it, it is helpful if you're in a group that needs, somebody else needs a quick heal. Of course, Consecrate Weapon, we already dealt with. I put that as my uh, W key right along the top here. So I hit W in my normal rotation, and I'll be using uh, Conse uh, Consecrate Weapon. Now, Dispel Evil is one that often gets overlooked, and I highly recommend keeping this um, on your macro bar and setting it so that you get used to using it. What it does is it will dispel any evil summoned creatures in the area. <clears throat> now, this doesn't count for things like Energy Vortexes or Rising Colossus, um, but what it's very, very great for are the Revenants. So... Um, as we get on to our adventures, you'll see occasionally when you're fighting a, nec uh, a necro-based magic monster, um, the higher level ones will cast revenants on you, which are kind of a uh, black-robed spirit that is pretty relentless, and they'll keep coming at you, and sometimes they'll even target other people. So Dispel Evil is a super handy way for us to get rid of those things. I'm going to give it an assignment of Control D. So I hit Control D, and it's pretty much an instant cast. So you can do it while you're in combat. You run up to something, hit Control D, and it will uh, attempt to dispel. It's at 80 shiv. It works most of the time. It's not 100% of the time, but it works enough. Uh, Divine Fury. Uh, we're gonna put it on our hot bar, but like I said, I'm probably not gonna use it a whole bunch. Um, but I will put it on here, and I'm gonna assign it a uh, hotkey of F. So you can see the buff I get is 9% hit chance, 12 damage increase, and 5% swing speed increase. Um, so, but it does lower your defense chance. So that's usually why I don't use it. Um, I'm already kind of a little squishy enough because I'm not running full DCI as you'll see. But um, it is useful if you're fighting a, mon a monster that you can't hit for some reason or you need a little bit faster swing speed increase, you can keep Divine Fury up. Um, Enemy of One is another one we're gonna be using quite a bit, so I'm gonna put that down here. And, um, actually, yeah, that's fine. So with Enemy of One, I'll move it right there. I'm gonna actually, I don't cast this as often as some of the other spells, so I'm gonna do this with Specialized Key, uh, left, left control E, whatever, whatever you want to do. You could do control E, you could do E, enemy of one. Um, so what it does is when you cast it, 
and then you notice that it says to the next creature you attack, you take fi you do 50% more damage. Now you can see it says now I do 46% damage to boars since the first creature I hit was a boar. Um, so any other boars in the area, I will do more damage to. However, I do 100%. I take 100% damage from anything else. So um, these do have a pretty long timer. It's about uh, two to three minutes, depending on your chivalry level. So at 80, you should get just uh, about three minutes. So you want to make sure that you know when you're not needing it, you cast it again, to take it off. Um, you know, there's certain areas if you know that you're fighting all, like in certain spawns, you're fighting all the same type of monster, enemy of one is very helpful. If you're uh, doing a single target, like the main boss, you're probably going to want to use enemy of one. If you're in an area where there's lots of different types of monsters or different spawn creatures, you may want to keep it off. Uh, so that's... You'll see more as we get into some of the combat gameplay of where I'll use enemy of one and where I won't. Holy Light, we're going to completely ignore. Uh, Noble Sacrifice, I'm going to kind of keep on the bar. We rarely use it, um, but it is our, our method to be able to resurrect other players. So um, it's kind of useful there. And Remove Curse. So Remove Curse is another one of those ones where um, it can be beneficial. I don't use it a bunch, but uh, uh, basically... It will remove things like weaken, clumsy, paralyze, uh, feeble mind, etc. Um, so it is useful, you know, if, if you're getting annoyingly uh, cursed a lot and it's really affecting your gameplay, you can, you know, remove curse and it will get rid of a lot of those negative effects or at least attempt to. Um, you can substitute remove curse. You can use. Uh, Enchanted Apples, which is a very similar thing. Re remove Curse actually is probably mostly used to remove Blood Oath. So if there is a reason where I use it all the time, it's when I'm fighting like Dark Father uh, in Doom, I would use Remove Curse to get rid of the Blood Oath because those high-level Blood Oaths can really do you in. Um, if you're not familiar, what Blood Oath is, is a necromancy spell that... Um, whatever damage you do to the monster after you've been cast uh, after it's been cast on you you actually get back that damage uh, or some of it so especially if you're hitting that monster pretty hard you're using a slayer weapon you've got enemy of one that sort of thing and if they blood oath you you could very easily kill yourself by attacking the monster um, so then sacred journey of course we already covered uh, i've got that in one of my uh handy macros so just to be clear it's using sacred journey using the uh, target to be cursor so folks that's necromancy and so now you can see with 80 necromancy i should be able to uh, move around easy i should be able to um, not fail so i've got a nice recall ability um, when i Consecrate weapon, you can see that my the proc chance for Consecrate is now 100%. I'm getting uh, zero bonus. Um, and, but that's okay, because really what I want is that um, I don't have any weapon skills, so it, that's why it's happening. Um, so there we go. That's, uh, that's, that's uh, Chivalry. Okay, so the third and last magic ability that we're going to have on our Sampire is... Bushido, uh, which is the samurai portion of the Sampire. Uh, now, if you followed this guide, you started Bushido at around 50, and I kind of pointed out that while you're training other skills, you can um, use confidence to kind of easily gain it up. Um, I'm going to go over real quick what some of the Bushido skills are, and we're going to talk about training that up to around 60, maybe 62 or so. Uh, before we move on. I'm not going to take Bushido all the way up to 100 in this particular section because you don't really need to. It's one where it's easier to train kind of uh, using it while you're also gaining your uh, melee abilities. So, uh, so real quick, Bushido has a few active abilities or active spells that you can cast. These are combat related spells, quote unquote. Um, that that do various things so we already talked a little bit about confidence and uh, just as a recap confidence is um, 
basically what it does is it it says it puts you in a defensive stance and allows you to game stand on health back so um you know at a low confidence that i'm at right now if i hit space bar what it's doing is actually it's giving me a lot of hit point regeneration so you can see 47 hit point regeneration for four seconds um that's probably the main thing that it's used for um it also though it gives you the ability so that when you successfully parry an attack while you're in combat you may gain back some hit points as well so it's kind of an additional uh, boost for healing if you do parry uh, with a max parry um, max parry and max bushido and a two-handed weapon generally you're parrying about 40 or uh, 30 to 40 percent of the time I can't remember exactly what the statistics are. It's it's less than half, um, so it's not really super reliable for healing. But one of the great things about confidence is that you can do it while you're moving. So <laughs> uh, a lot of times uh, you'll see that with the Sampire, you generally don't want to run away too often because it could be your demise if you do. But if you are running, uh, using uh, confidence is a great way to kind of you know. Um, give you a little bit of healing in a pvp scenario it's probably going to be your only source of healing aside from potions um so this this character really isn't going to be specced for good pvp or at least not long periods of uh, player versus player but it does do something uh, especially if you if you get it up to 100 or 120 uh, so i put that on my space bar it's kind of my oh crap uh, scenario uh, what we're going to do for training is we're literally just going to spam confidence up until and until we get about um, um, 60 to 62 Bushido and then we're going to move on. We're not going to lock it there. We're just going to move on because confidence has definitely a um, diminishing gain. You can't really gain Bushido much past 62 or 63. Um, so real quick on some of these other ones there are a few very important bushido um, active abilities or spells that you want to you know kind of keep on your hot bar um, the two that i use probably or there's three that i use uh, out of these out of this list so one of them is lightning strike um, especially when we're training bushido in combat which i'll show you in a, in a future episode when we get into combat training um, lightning strike is going to be um, a big boon and I will set this to S. So it can tell you that uh, when you enable lightning strike, your next strike will have a 50% hit chance increase and three chance to, to critical. Um, so they're both very valuable. The critical, excuse me, the critical, uh, it does scale. So the higher your Bushido, the, the more chance you have for a critical attack. And it can be quite... Uh, a substantial uh, damage bonus so um, and of course since we'll be leeching back health uh, due to how much damage we do we want to do as much damage as we can it also helps hit sometimes those those high level monsters where even your 45 uh, hit chance increase is not going to quite cut it so lightning strike is something that is very good especially early on to just continuously chain it doesn't require a lot of mana it uh, it only uses six um, with my 40 LMC. So uh, if you're low on mana and you need to kind of get in an extra hit, Lightning Strike's a good uh, go-to. Uh, the other one we're going to talk about later in more detail, but it's uh, worth bringing up right now, is Evasion. So Evasion uh, is... That says you need at least 60. So that's why we're going to take it to 60 so we can use it. But what it does is it basically puts you into a defensive uh, stance that's based on your parry. So with Bushido of at least 60 and parry, uh, I think you have to have at least uh, 50 or 60, um, you have a chance to avoid magical damage. So evasion is the only way that you can avoid taking damage from spells. Now, it doesn't last very long. It's only a few seconds. But as you'll see, part of the Sampire gameplay will be kind of learning how to time when to cast evasion, 
knowing, uh, especially when you're dealing with uh, player versus monster, knowing when you kind of hear the monsters charge up and get ready to cast on you, the right time to use evasion so that you're not, um, you know, getting lit up by a whole bunch of spells at once. So this is very critical when you're, uh, say, in a champion's bond that has a bunch of spellcasters. You'll be using evasion, and your ability to time and use evasion will mean whether or not you, you know, live or die, essentially. Um, the other one that I use mainly is uh, Momentum Strike. And what this does is it it allows you to basically attack two compo two opponents if they're uh, right near. So if you're if you're surrounded or you're by two different monsters at once and you're fighting one, if you hit momentum strike, it'll essentially move that attack onto uh, the next. So you'll do double damage, and this is very useful. I'm going to put it in my hot bar, and I'm going to give it a hotkey of A. So it's kind of out of order here, but that that'll do. Um, so you need 70 Bushido to use Momentum. We won't be able to use it right now, but later we'll be using Momentum to train Bushido during our combat. Um, so that's pretty much it. There are some other ones, Honorable Execution um, and Counterattack that I rarely use. I know that there are some people that swear by these. Um, to me, it's just kind of too hard to judge whether or not your next hit will kill an opponent. Um, with Counterattack, it allows you to uh, put you in a mode where not only do you parry, but you will attack back and do some additional damage. It it's, can be useful, but uh, generally uh, Lightning Strike, Momentum Strike, and Evasion, and Confidence are the four main Bushido spells that I use. All right, so again, to train Bushido up to 60, what I'm going to do is just sit here and spam my confidence macro. Um, in case you guys don't don't remember that, what I did is I combined confidence with open door. So it looks like this: you set open door and then confidence, and then that way I can just have it on my space bar. And you, there's really no timer on it. You can just spam it over and over. You don't have to wait for it to wear off to gain. So I'm going to do this until I reach about 60 to 62 uh, Bushido, and then we'll be done with our magic abilities. Okay, so after about an hour, uh, maybe a little bit more than an hour, uh, maybe a little bit less, I kind of wasn't as diligent on it as I probably could have been, but I just repeated using confidence over and over, and I was able to raise my Bushido up to almost 62, so it's 61.7. Um, you know, I, I did end up using uh, meditation a little bit because you do uh, you you do run out of mana when you're doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and I I un I locked it, but now I'm going to set it to go down again. <clears throat> and for the most part, this character is now ready for combat training. So um, probably before I do that on this character, I'll probably go back to my boat and uh, raise my resist spells up to GM. It's a pretty easy and painless process. And in the process, I'm going to lower my intelligence and I'm going to set my dexterity to raise. Um, so I'm starting with a pretty low dexterity and raising resist spells uh, to GM will increase my dexterity at least somewhat so that I'm not starting from scratch. Um, that's kind of why I do it in that order is I'll raise strength and lock it and then ra use my... Uh, raise all my magic abilities first so that intelligence can raise and then I can set it to go down and just focus on dexterity uh, based activities from that point on. So I'll probably go and do that uh, and so by the next video I'll have uh, I'll also have GM resist and this character will be ready for combat training. Uh, now the next video I will make will actually be uh, focusing on crafting this character's starter sampire suit. So in this video tutorial, I'm not going to use any... Uh, I mean, I did use some legendary items for my uh, mage training. These were not necessary. Uh, you can craft 100% LRC and 40 LMC and 6 and 2 pretty easy. I did show how you could do that. Um, but for this main character's battle suit, I will be crafting all the items 
and that way you know anyone who has access to Ultima Online and a crafter will be able to follow this guide and be successful with the Sampire even if they don't have all the best artifacts or the best drops. Um, one common misconception I think that a lot of people say is that Sampires are all about the gear and that's somewhat true uh, but the gear doesn't have to be the most valuable artifact drops um, if you know how to do it, you can craft a, um, a starter Sampire suit that will take you for you know, a long, long time until you start getting the artifact drops that you want and you can slowly swap out the pieces. Um, I think that's, that's good. So the next video will be all about crafting. And then uh, after we get this uh, tune equipped, then I will have a follow-up video that will start off on the combat training and I'll show you how to raise all your combat skills. Alright, thanks a lot.